Hey, it's Steve and Caleb from Brownells, back with another exciting episode of Smith Busters. And today, as you can see, we're at the Brownell shooting range, and Caleb has got a great myth for us today. I do, Steve. So this is a follow-up on one we've done in the studio in the past. Uh, just talking about mounting optics on the handguard. People do that. Or bridging the gap between the receiver and the handguard. Ooh, that's got to be a no-no. Yeah, so let's actually show what happens when you do that. Okay, what so, do you got in mind? Well, this optic is zeroed. Right. And it's on the receiver. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll um, just kind of move it off of its point here. We'll move it forward a little bit. All right, you, you got an aim point there, so eye relief is not critical. Right, so we'll move it forward just a little bit, get it on the handguard, shoot a group. Maybe, so, and, and let me back up a little bit. This AR-15, this is the one we built when we did the how to build an affordable yeah. AR. Yeah. So it's just your basic baseline AR-15. Um, but it is a free float handguard that is a solid setup. It's, it's a nice good, this is a Breek Arms, it's a nice solid handguard, yeah. but also affordable. Um, so what we'll do is we'll move the red dot onto the handguard, shoot it, and whenever we move it initially, I don't think much is gonna happen, mm -hmm. but we'll bang this handguard around a little bit oh. and see if that affects zero. Okay. So let's just do those two things first. So I'll move it forward, shoot it, bang it around, shoot it again. Right. So okay. let's do that. Uh, so we'll shoot it, then we'll show you the group down range and go from there. Let's do it. All right. All right. A little low and a little right. Same place. All right. Well, that's a, that'll be a good group then. All right. We got a baseline. Yep. Let's go take a look at it. All right. Nice three shot group there. Yep. It's not bad. Yeah, I pulled one, but I mean, this is a good baseline. Yeah. So let's move that optic onto the handguard and shoot the same exact thing again. Same okay. target. Okay, let's see where it hits then. Yep. All right. All right, your group has moved. Yeah, it has. But that was not unexpected. Yeah, and I mean, moving the optic from one place to the other, you, you can expect it to move, even if we moved it on the receiver. But I want to get a baseline for when we bang this thing around. Right. So let's check it out. Okay, three more shots with a new point of impact. That's because it's been unmounted and remounted. But that group opened up quite a bit. It did. I, I felt pretty, I felt just as good shooting that group than that and that group. Okay. Um, I think that actually might have to do with that handguard flexing or the, the weight of the bipod pushing well, on the Well, yeah, handguard. you're pushing on the gun, which is hitting the bipod. And... Right, because it's not, it's not settling in the same exact place every time, I don't think. Okay. So I think there's some kind of vibration going on in that handguard that actually opened that group up a little bit. Could very well be. Because I felt, I mean, I felt pretty good about it. So, and that's more than double the group size. Yeah, yeah it's close to double. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's bang it around and shoot it again without right. moving the optic. Right. All right. Rubber's about to meet the road here. All right. So we'll just kind of simulate a real life scenario here of just your gun getting banged around. Okay. The hammer's down, chamber's empty. Hammer's down, chamber's empty. What are you going to do now? I'm just going to toss it. Ah! We'll put it over there for now. All right. And then, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. How bad could it be? All right, same exact op optic position, same exact target. Let's see what happens. Let's All check right. it out. Yep, I think you may be surprised. All right, three more rounds, and it's basically in that same group. Maybe the point of impact shifted just up a little bit? Yeah, it definitely shifted, and the group is still pretty open. Yeah. Um, 
Not as a dramatic move as I expected. Right. Well, we're, we're pretty close, too, though. We, we are very close. At if 100 you, yards, you'd be off the target, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. At 100 yards, you wouldn't be anywhere near the target. Right. Because, I mean, you multiply that by, you know, math. 100? 100, 100? Yeah, you use math. <laughs> math is pretty good at that. Um, and you can even use the kind of math where you put letters in it. But anyway, okay. we won't get into that. Okay. So, yeah, I would say um, definitely keep it off your handguard. Yeah. And so, unless it's just super close range work that you're doing. Yeah, but I mean, there's no reason to. I, th that's a huge difference. Yeah. Between A and B, the first group we shot was a decent group, right? right. And um, the next group we shot opened up. The next one we shot, point of impact shifted, and it was still open. Sure. So there's no reason to put yourself at that disadvantage. Um, now, I got one more test I want to do. Okay. I want to mount an LPVO bridging the gap between the handguard and receiver. Interesting. So I want to shoot a group with that uh -huh. in that spot, which is going to kind of suck because the eye relief, but I'll figure it out. Then I want to bang the handguard around again and okay. then shoot another group. Well, we got one pristine target left. Yep, we'll do it down here. Yeah, All right, let's do perfect. that. Let's do it. Cool. You're a little off to the right, a little low. I'm gonna shoot one more. This is gonna be a four shot group. All right, we just shot a four round group and not the greatest group in the world. It's really not. But it'll uh, it'll work for what we're doing. Yeah, so we've, we've shot groups with that optic on that rifle before, but it was mounted on the receiver and it was a tight group. Moving it to the handguard, as expected, that group opened up a bit. So we got one, two, three, four, and that's a good, that's a little over an inch group. It's like you shot two and it shifted and you shot another two. That's exactly what it looks like, Steve, and yeah. I think that's exactly what happened. Um, oh man. And we're only at like 36 yards yeah. roughly. And that's an inch at least. Yeah, so that's not good already. So right. having it that gap bridged is the reason that group is so big. So already not off to a great start. Uh, but let's bump the handguard around and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna turn my back this time. And we're using an ADM mount. It's a really solid mount. So we're giving that thing the best chance it possibly has at staying where it needs to be. Oh yeah, it's bolted down good. Yeah, so I mean, if you were using two separate rings, it would be even worse. Yeah. Oh, I would think so. Yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, let's go shoot it again. All right, let's All right, give it a throw try. it around. All right, gun's empty and Hammers down, and here we go. Oh, I hate that sound. All right, let's shoot it again. All right. All right, let's do it again. Ready when you are. Oh man, I can already see how much it shifted. So could I. The group's not terrible, but yeah, no. it's shifted so much. All right. No, group size is fine. Yeah, the group is actually decent. But <laughs> oh. yeah, let's go. Uh, let's 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 show let's show the audience. All right. All right. We got good news and we got bad news. And the good news is the group actually shrunk after being thrown on the ground. Uh, but the bad news is, how far do you think that shift is right there? So that's a good at least two, two and a half inches. Right. Um, and, and again, you're off target at 100 yards. When we say the group got better, it's still not a great group. No, don't get us wrong. That's not a great group. But uh, yeah, we that's not that's not good. That's um, for a handgun to be all right. For a handgun to be yeah, sure. But you know, this is a this is a rifle here. Yeah. And that, that would easily miss that target, any of those targets downrange. I know, so. I know. So, what with that being that said, myth? yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's, we'll head back into the shade and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll conclude. All right. All right, well, we've got uh, a couple pairs of groups there that definitely show discrepancies once the gun has been Shall we say stressed? Stressed, yeah. If you're if you're using this gun, especially like as a defense type scenario, 
thing. Um, let's say for whatever reason you were using this as like a, a truck gun or like a get home gun or anything like that. Let's say you're in a stressful situation, you're pulling it out the truck, you fumble, maybe maybe you know something happened that caused you to drop the rifle. Yeah. It falls on the ground, you pick it up, and um, now your zero's right. wonky. Now, with a conventional optic, you're not going to be tempted to put it that far forward normally. No. It's just too hard to shoot that way. Yeah, but if you scroll the, the forums and internet in general, you'll see people bridging the gap, not just with LPVOs, but with red dots and stuff too. And um, this is, the, I mean, this is a perfect example of why it's bad to do that. Just keep it on the receiver and you won't have any of these accuracy issues. Right. So if that was a myth, was, was the myth that it's okay to do it or not okay? So the, when we did it before, it was, can you mount optics on handguards or yeah. something like that? Um, and that's busted. You can't, you shouldn't right. do that. Not if you so, expect accuracy. Yeah, and we all expect accuracy out of our firearms. So there oh, you have it. All right. Well, if you want to sound off and let us know what you think in the comments, we'd like to hear from you. If you have any experience with loss of zero or anything, tell us in the comments. In the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.